universe, where you learn the secrets of the social media through the social universe, and in many cases, the secrets of the universe itself. Today, we're talking about da, 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 the social media, right? But we're also talking about uh, the secrets of the universe, which has to do with beauty, fitness, being the person you want to be, so that when you do promote yourself in the social media, you are the best that you can be, and this not in the army, right? You got to actually be the best person you want to be completely. So we uh, uh, want to say thanks to our uh, sponsors, Compound Factor. You can find them at compoundfactor.com. There you're going to find uh, how you can take care of your skin, get rid of acne, um, whether it be your own acne or those around you um, that you care about, uh, sons, daughters, whatever the case might be. And we also um, have the, with Compound Factor, we have the ability to um, provide you with focus drinks, energy drinks, all those types of things. We also want to say thanks to Planet Beach for sponsoring the show and we uh, recommend that you go there for their unlimited spa treatments. You're going to love it if you go by uh, planetbeach.com. So we are joined today by Desiree and Natasha Nicole Hello. Um, and uh, we would like to <coughs> uh, thank both of them for coming on the show. Desiree, welcome. Thank you so much. And Natasha's been on the show for a couple of, of uh, segments with us. Now, um, Desiree, since uh, we've kind of already uh, introduced and Natasha Nicole, um, has uh, been a competition winner at the MPC Miles uh, Competitive Fitness Events. Um, and it has kind of a unique story. And one of the things in the social media that you always want to do is share your story. So we've kind of been sharing a Natasha Nicole story, and then we wanted to bring you up to speed um, with uh, uh, Desiree's story. And then we want to talk about how all those types of things can be uh, used in the social media to be able to create um, what it is that you want to create. It's, it's uh, clay that you can mold throughout the use of the social media. So Desiree, tell us a little bit about uh, your background, what made you decide to get into the competitive fitness arena? Um, well, first off, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Um, greatly appreciated. I probably say uh, a few years ago, I actually went through a really rough time in my life and kind of questioned my own self-worth and really what my overall potential was, I guess. Um, definitely made me question a lot of different things. I wasn't too happy and I used to be known for smiling all the time everywhere I went. So decided to make some quick changes and uh, started working out. Found Felicia Romero, who's actually my trainer, and helped me really try, try and find what motivates me and what really inspires me um, to really kind of share my story and help others. I took it by the reins and really just kind of went forth and now, I mean, every time you see me, I'm always complimented on my smile, um, maybe smiling too much, but I guess that's always <laughs> a no such thing. <laughs> 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 and a lot of people say that too, that yes. there's never such a uh, thing as smiling too much, but um, now, I mean, I work out, I'm happy with my life, um, I'm in a brand new relationship and I'm happy with my job happy with my family, I'm closer with my family, I'm closer with my friends, and I really just kind of take each day and, uh, you know, live life to the fullest. I always feel that tomorrow's never promised, so your time is now. This is kind of what Nick, uh, Natasha Nicole was talking about in the last segment, is that to be able to empower uh, women or people, I mean, it, it changed my life when I, I got fit and, and completely uh, changed my outlook in, in the career. Now, I wasn't going to competitive fitness, but I did change uh, my, my professional image, and that worked a lot better in the social, in the social media, believe me. Um, but N Natasha Nicole in particular helps uh, change women's lives, and, and uh, Desiree, would you say that this, the competitive fitness arena has changed your life? Absolutely, absolutely, most definitely. Um, you know, like I said, it's not only given me a boost of self-esteem in the right direction, but it's also helped me feel more confident, just overall really happy so I can enjoy life, enjoy what I'm doing, and, and really, I mean, I've already had such a huge boost to my following on my social media, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm already inspiring others just by sharing what I'm going through and sharing my story, so it's definitely um, a, a blessing. Excellent. Thank you for joining us on the show, and we're going to kind of talk about the social media now, how you pull all that together. So um, we ended the last segment talking about uh, Instagram and how you can kind of start uh, telling your picture story uh, along with your blog, mm -hmm. um, and we talked about some blogging hands. Um, but one of the things that unites a lot of the social media is the hashtag. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it isn't just, was it Jimmy Fallon? Who was it? They, they, no, no, it was... Um, 
who are the guys that did the big joke? Uh, it was on Jimmy Fallon. Oh, they're like, hashtag this, yeah, hashtag, hashtag this, hashtag, 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 hashtag. That was great. That was a great <laughs> segment. I do know what you're talking about now. Okay, so, um, so tell us a little bit about the hashtag and what social media programs you use it, when you should use it, and when it gets a little bit crazy. Absolutely. Well, as you see, hashtags are everywhere. They even are promoting them on shirts now. Hashtag love, hashtag whatever it is, hashtag selfie. Mm -hmm. So the way that a hashtag works is that you take something so simple as a picture of you smiling on stage, happy, whatever, and you want to let everyone know what it's about. So you're going to hashtag the location. So hashtag Mesa Center for the Arts, hashtag NPC Miles Productions, hashtag NPC, and then you can talk about what it is. So hashtag fitness, hashtag lifting, hashtag bodybuilding, hashtag training, hashtag eat clean, hashtag train hard, hashtag supplements, hashtag this, that, anything. And so when you go and you look at the hashtags, you type in to your search bar on any sort of social network. So Twitter has this, um, Instagram has this, Facebook is new to have this, and there's plenty other uh, accounts now that you can look up hashtags. So for example, when you go and you look up hashtag fitness, it'll pull up every single thing relating to fitness. And that way you're sending it out into the whole fitness world where people are going to be able to follow you and relate to you because you guys have the same interest, fitness. So for example, if you're looking up relationship quotes, you can look up hashtag relationship quotes. And it's going to pull up a whole bunch of quotes about relationships. And then you could look up hashtag blue. So if you look hashtag blue, picture of a selfie of him My that he took earlier. Blue shirt. Yeah. That he took earlier. He was all like this. Um, would be hashtag blue or this sign you could write hashtag blue or even eye color hashtag blue. So it's as simple as talking about a minor thing that's in the picture or a major thing and bringing it to that target market, which is very good also. Something that I do with my account is that when I'm looking for new clients, I simply tag hashtag weight loss motivation. Now, all the places you can put hashtag, they include Twitter, they include Facebook, Instagram. What are some other really um, good I put places? them on my blog, too, because there's yes. a little, like, uh, hyperlink where mm -hmm. it, like, yeah, it captures it. whatever. Yeah, it grabs yeah, it. Gotcha. And so you can look up, like, uh, hashtag recipes or hashtag clean eating, hashtag avocados. You can look up a whole bunch of recipes that have the healthy fat avocado in there, and it's going to bring up everything that avocados have to do with. So it's as simple as... I mean, a lot of websites are really on board now with it because they are seeing that hashtags are the way to go and people want to look for a particular thing. I think that there's going to be a broader thing like Google looking up hashtags. That's exactly where I was going is that the, the one problem that social media has had, they always have had the sticky factor, which means that um, it's some, when somebody jumps on their social media, it's particularly in particular Facebook, they stay on for 45 minutes. When they're on Google, it's only six to seven minutes, strangely enough. Um, so the sticky factor is a lot stronger in the social media, but they have absolutely terrible um, uh, search engine capacity. So the hashtag is kind of becoming that very archaic but, but slowly developing uh, way to be able to search the internet for the keywords that you're looking for. Very interesting. Yeah. And it's a good thing too. I'm finding a lot of information online. Yeah, because I love competition in the marketplace. Google, in my opinion, is way too powerful. Facebook is way too lazy. So um, I think the two of them need to actually get into, you know, a big fight and get stronger and, and I think it would be a lot better. In my let's make a hashtag.com. Yeah, let's that put a hashtag genius, compete huh? Google against uh, Facebook.com. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right, somebody, would you do that for us, please? So um, we so, get 50 50 credit, though. Yeah, yeah, correct. Make or sure that you put, yeah, we'll put us in the sub, <laughs> sub notes on your hashtag. So that's what we're looking for. So um, now, what also is important um, in your own life as well as it will start showing up in your social media. So, for example, if you are, um, if you're college age, I want you to take advice from Natasha Nicole because a lot of people float through their high school, they float through their college, they don't have a firm set of goals uh, and anything that they really believe in and it shows when everything is just bottoms up uh, and, and now they decide uh, you know on their in their social media and their Instagrams everything is you know hazy like eyes and they, they, they've been partying, partying, partying for their entire life. Now they want to get a job. They, you don't think the employer is going to actually take a look at that real quick? Whereas if you are like Natasha Nicole and you have a whole goal system set up, tell us about goals and, and uh, uh, what your strategy is about setting goals. Let's see, goals. Well, something that I've always done poorly and very great on are deadlines. Mm -hmm. And who likes deadlines? Pretty much nobody, right? Mm -hmm. But what is good with a deadline is that it holds you very accountable 
for achieving whatever you have to do at that particular date. So resulting back when I started my weight loss transformation, I wanted to be on stage on July 13th and I was going to do whatever it took to be there. So I noticed that I was uh, motivated by eating clean because I knew the date, like the deadline was coming up. I was motivated by killing my workouts because the deadline was coming up, things like that. So with goals, a lot of the things that I tell my clients are that hold yourself accountable for your date and make that the date of the anniversary of your new body. And so that's something that uh, definitely a huge secret and a good tip that I would give out is um, pick a date, go on a calendar and you know find a date that works best for you or an upcoming show or some or even a friend's wedding or a big role that you're going to play in your life and even you can go um, much smaller like schedule a photo shoot with a friend and say on you know September 1st I want to be the best version of myself so on September 1st you're going to do whatever you can on then you have the photo shoot booked and you'll have the pictures to show that you worked hard for September 1st. So it's little things like that, having goals, and that's such a small spectrum. Now with big goals, you can be anything. And as my grandma told me when I was a very young girl, the first one of the first words she ever taught me was imagination. And if you can imagine it, if you can dream it, you can accomplish it. You can imagine the craziest things in the world, and they're possible because there is a way to get to them. So. Here I am, dreaming so big, super goal-oriented, focused and determined to be who I want to be. I have achieved every single goal that I've set for myself along the way, and I'm hoping to have these far-fetched goals somewhere in the future. I would like to achieve them, and I will achieve them because I'm goal-oriented, I'm driven, and I want to be able to, exactly like previous journeys, do whatever it takes to be at those goals. Absolutely. So as an example, um, it, we were actually at an event that Natasha Nicole was at, um, and uh, she said, hey, can I do the wrap-up? And we said, you know, do you want to have the, you know, the <laughs> official talk show host with you? No, I'm just fine. So she got, <laughs> got the microphone, and uh, she actually did the, the entire wrap-up, did a beautiful job with it uh, without me even there, <laughs> which was kind of fun. First time, so it was awesome. we're like, yeah, yeah, that's it. we got to bring you on the show. <laughs> so, um, but out of that is uh, uh, you can look forward to a, a very high potential of a media club getting established at the U of A that, um, that Natasha Nicole will be creating so just there's all kinds of things that mm -hmm. that, are, that come out of, of these experiences so now Desiree tell us a little bit about that I know you're probably burning to tell us you know that they when you did set the, the date for your new body and yeah. decided you know this is the birth of my new body what what was that experience like for you um, life-changing um, mm -hmm. I had set the date it was three months out when I made the decision to actually compete and three months seemed very short um, you look at other competitors, some of them have, especially the ones with their pro cards, some of them have been training for a year um, and, and then some. So three months definitely seemed like a short goal, but um, my trainer had total support in me and total belief, and so did my family, um, my boyfriend and my close friends. So I took a breath, sucked it up, and went for it. Um, as soon as I did, I, you know, I, I ate clean the entire time. I stayed focused on what I needed to do in the gym. And as soon as that date was coming up, it was a week away, and I know I was just, I'm uh, crazy oriented, and I got a paper and wrote down every appointment that I needed to do for my hair, my tan, my makeup, the jewelry, the shoes, everything. Um, crossed everything off as I made my way through the list, and then the list was done, and I had like, five days to do nothing and I didn't know what to do I was going crazy um, but as soon as it was there um, my mom she's my biggest supporter she actually um, gave me the bracelet I'm wearing it says believe in yourself oh, that's and great. Um, I carry it with me all the time she actually drove me around to all of my appointments for my first one she went to Tucson with me wow. um, for the first day and we went to check-ins and then it really hit me that this is really happening. <laughs> and you placed in both events? I did. Um, my very first show, I uh, went to the MC Terminator in Tucson, Arizona, and I took fourth place. And my second show, I competed in Mesa, Arizona for the Arizona Open, and I took second place in Bikini Novice. 
Oh, man, so gay, congratulations. Thank and you how did so that much. feel? What was your feeling when you know, the trophy girl came and handed you? I got to award it to her, too. <laughs> yeah, and I did. She did. <laughs> and I told you, I, I remember I was just like, you were so beautiful. And you were just so excited. And I remember your beaming smile. <laughs> Who doesn't remember this beautiful smile? Oh. And she was so excited. And we just clicked afterwards. And we're actually friends on all social media now, keeping in touch. And when I got to see her at the Parade of Champions, the event that we did, we had so much fun laughing and taking pictures and stuff because we knew each other. And it was awesome because we met through the fitness industry. Absolutely. And now, Desiree, share your information too, what you feel comfortable with. So we don't want any, I think if anybody's on YouTube, you're probably going to be trying to stalk both of these young women. <laughs> but, but we want to do it in a very safe way. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. So, uh, so I no share home with address? Us, yeah, no home address, no cell phone numbers. No cell phone number. Okay. <laughs> however, I, uh, the information that you're okay with releasing to the public, how does somebody find you? Um, well, my uh, you can look me up on Facebook and Twitter um, under Desiree. It's Desire with an extra E, like way to spell it. Um, mm -hmm. Last name is Trevino, just like the golfer. Lee Trevino is my fourth cousin. Um, keep it on the wraps, though. <laughs> um, and my Instagram account is yourgirl underscore Des XOXO. And you can look me up on any three of those. Um, I appreciate the support. I appreciate the following. And... Um, I just aim to inspire and motivate, so. Thank you, definitely, Absolutely. for coming on the show. Now, uh, since we are doing a little bit of shameless promotion, and uh, doing promotions here, is there anything in your world that you're wanting to promote or get the word out about, you know, your life or anything you're involved in that you would like to, to get out there on the air? Um, I do want to give um, probably just two big shout outs, I okay. guess. Um, I recently did a photo shoot and it was the most professional, um, overwhelming, exciting, every positive word that you could think of mm -hmm. um, experience with James Patrick Photography. Uh -huh. um, I know that he's a huge photographer in the fitness world and is very successful, um, but definitely very professional, um, amazing time with that and I'm already trying to book another one and probably another one after that. Um, as well as my trainer, Felicia Romero. Um, she's an IFBB pro figure, and she's one of my biggest supporters along with my family and my friends. Um, she definitely changed everything for me and has opened doors for me um, to many new opportunities beyond just competing, and she took her training beyond just um, you know up to stage date and, and everything. We're, we're friends now, and uh, we're definitely working on some new things, so thank you both. Uh -huh, absolutely, and Felicia Romero is most likely going to come on the show either uh, sometime next week or the week after. So she's uh, definitely in the lineup. Yeah. Um, maybe a lot of we can. She's wonderful. To. We have yeah, so much fun she's together. A lot of fun. <laughs> she definitely is. Um, okay, so now uh, we talked to a little bit about Twitter, which is got kind of goes along with it with the hashtag, um, and uh, now. As far as emerging onto the scene, what are, what would you say as a young person in your generation, what would you say are some of the new social media that are kind of up and coming? Not the standard Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram, but... I don't even know, know what LinkedIn is ah, these days. okay. <laughs> now, that is something young people should get involved in, but not but only when they become mature enough, okay? Um, the nice thing is you can only put one picture up there. So all those party pictures, that you can't even put them up there. So you can't ruin your image. Um, if you And also, just a little side note, if you're interviewing, then just shut down your Facebook account. You can quiet it down. I know that would be like asking somebody to cut your own throat, but the point <laughs> is, is that just do it while you're interviewing and leave your LinkedIn account up, and then nobody will know about all that party, Mitchie. Oh, there's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so wake it back up after after uh, you, you get the job. Right? <laughs> you can. You can put it to sleep for a couple of weeks and wake it back up. So just a little helpful hint for all of the young people out there that have lived on social media not realizing an employer is going to look at you one day. Um, now, if you're a future employer, if you're going to go into professional modeling and, and or push modeling or whatever, you know what? You may have the perfect, perfect uh, social media for the push modeling agency to say, wow, we want that, that young woman uh, doing push modeling for us. But if you're looking for something different than that, then make sure you act into that career and it shows yes. up. Or just, again, shut it down, wake it back up after you get the job. Well, my little <laughs> tidbit about that is that you shouldn't be putting anything on social media that you aren't proud of and that you wouldn't want people to see. So if you yes. have... Think like, about that. If you have <laughs> if you have negative comments to make or negative posts or... Yeah, bullying. Yeah, yeah like bullying, that, absolutely. Oh, I could go yeah. on for bullying forever. But mm -hmm. with um, things like that, you want to keep all that stuff off. Inappropriate pictures, things that you wouldn't be too happy if 
if your father saw mm -hmm. stuff like that, hi dad. <laughs> uh, but you, you would want to make sure that you're making appropriate things. Now, there are certain things that are acceptable, like progress pictures and transformations. If, say, you had it in a bra and underwear, I think that maybe you could try to do it in a swimsuit. So it's a little bit more comforting in your cell. But say that you do have a bra and underwear picture as your transformation, that's okay. But try not to make it inappropriate or scandalous. And you want to uh, motivate the whole fitness in transformation and not try to sell sex over you know social media that's kind of what it uh, comes down to yeah, yeah yeah celebrate the fact that you're in shape but not necessarily going into the sexual side so, yeah flex uh, yeah there we go do a quick flex and then it's time to go all right <laughs> no pump today but we'll get that all right, later that's right you i did legs get... yesterday so <laughs> Excellent. So it looks like it's uh, time to, to uh, end the show. Thank you uh, both to Desiree and Natasha Nicole for coming on the show. Uh, and again, this is Kurt Wilhelm, the host of The Social Universe here on World Talk Radio Voice America. And we look forward to seeing you next time.